The Tower of London during the Tudor period changed in its role as a royal palace. It became a feared site of torture, where devices such as a rack and the scavenger's daughter would inflict a huge amount of suffering onto the prisoners of the tower. But it also became an execution site, where many people would lose their heads, but shockingly, it was also a place where a number of women lost their heads in horrific ways. The Tower of London was considered the execution site of royals, and the incredibly noble and privileged, as just a short walk away is a public beheading spot of Tower Hill. The tower's walls allowed the eyes of the prying public to be kept away, so those who were condemned and were executed on Tower Green were incredibly well to do. But who were the women who were executed inside of the Tower of London? Join us today as we find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The executed women of the Tower of London would lose their heads on Tower Green, which was found outside of the White Tower, the oldest part of the fortress. It was also where a scaffold would be found, but there would be one of the women who would not even be allowed to lose her head on the scaffold. The first female victim of the Tower of London was Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, who was accused of adultery, incest and treason against her husband. Anne's execution was a sham, and she was accused of these false charges and was then found guilty. But because of this, she had been held and tried in the Tower of London itself, and once she went into the Tower a prisoner, she would never leave the walls, and still to this day she lies within the walls of the Tower of London, close to where she lost her head. On the 19th of May, 1536, Anne Boleyn made her way out of her lodgings, near to what today is called the Cold Harbour Gate, and she made the short walk to the executioner's scaffold on Tower Green. Anne was allowed a private execution, but she would also be granted another luxury, as it was considered that a French swordsman would act as the executioner. Anne heard about his reputation, and how he was known for taking heads off in one swift blow, and this was something Henry wanted for his wife, to not go the same way as the commoner's axe. After all, Anne was a Queen of England, and there was a lot more that could go wrong with an execution using axe, and it wasn't always the most reliable of methods, taking many swings to take a head off at times. The swordsman of Calais would take Anne's head clean off in one swing, and following this her remains were then taken into the chapel of St Peter of Vincula, and she was then buried in a hastily dug grave inside of a chest for bow staves. Another woman who lost her head inside the Tower of London was Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury. One of her sons would be the arch-nemesis of Henry VIII, Reginald Pole, a cardinal who would cause problems for the king. But Margaret Pole had royal blood, as she belonged to the Plantagenet dynasty, and because of this she would be a threat to the king. Henry VIII would order her arrest, and the elderly lady was then held inside the Tower of London for two and a half years, and was seemingly forgotten about. But on the morning of the 27th of May 1541, she was told she was going to die within the hour. She claimed that no crime had been committed, but she was taken from her cell to the place within the Tower of London, where a low wooden block had been placed upon the cobbled floor. This was a hastily arranged execution if there was ever one, and there was no scaffold for her to use. There are two eyewitness accounts, one by a French ambassador, and one by Eustace Chappie, the imperial ambassador. The Frenchman said that the execution occurred in a corner of the tower, where there were hardly any spectators, and Chappie said that, at first when the sentence of death was made known to her, she found the thing very strange, not knowing of what crime she was accused, nor how she had had been sentenced. But he then said her execution was performed by a wretched and blundering youth, who literally hacked her head and shoulders to pieces in the most pitiful manner. Margaret Pohl's head was hacked from her shoulders, and it's believed it took several swings of the axe to take her head. There were rumours about her breaking free of the executioner's clutches in the final moments, and that she may have even ran around the Tower of London, for freedom, following the first strike, but this is possibly a Victorian embellishment. But the execution of Margaret Pohl was horrific. She was also buried inside the chapel St Peter and Vincula. But the next two women who were executed inside the Tower of London were also condemned by Henry VIII, and these two would die by the commoner's axe, like Margaret Pohl. They were not allowed the concession of a swordsman, and they were also, and these executions were also hastily arranged. Catherine Howard was the fifth wife of Henry VIII, and she was a lot younger than the king, but she had become infatuated with the king's favourite courtier, Thomas Culpepper. 
The pair had an affair behind the king's back. One woman who helped to facilitate this was Jane Boleyn, the former sister-in-law of Anne Boleyn. She had been married to George, Anne Boleyn's brother, but he had lost his head on Tower Hill for being implicated in charges alongside his sister the Queen. But eventually rumours would emerge about Catherine Howard and Culpepper, and this would be investigated by Archbishop of Canterbury Thomas Cranmer, who would then find out and would tell the King exactly what was happening between his wife and his best friend. Catherine Howard and Jane Boleyn were then arrested and the pair were then taken to the Tower of London. Catherine would pass under the heads of her former lovers that she had and these were being cut off and placed on a pike above London Bridge. But Catherine and Jane were then held at the Tower of London and Jane Boleyn would be declared insane as she was completely hysterical. But the pair were both condemned to death for treason and to execute Jane, the king even changed the laws of his country to allow insane people to be executed for specific crimes. But inside of the Tower of London, the Axeman was summoned to Tower Green and the scaffold where the low block had been gathered. It was the 13th of February 1542 and Catherine Howard, the young wife of the king, lost her head first. She remained calm and would then lie on the block. Then the Axeman was skilled and he took her head clean off. But the scaffold was not cleaned and then Jane Boleyn was brought out to the same block. In the blood of her former mistress, Catherine Howard, Jane Boleyn would lose her head, which was also beheaded by the axe in one swift blow. It was a horrific sight, and the pair were then both buried inside the chapel St Peter of Vincula, alongside Anne Boleyn and Margaret Pole, within the tower's walls. But the final woman who was executed inside the Tower of London was Lady Jane Grey, the nine-day queen. She ultimately lost the crown because of Mary the I, who would rise up following the proclamation of Jane being queen after Edward VI's death. Jane would then, following Mary I becoming queen, be held as a prisoner inside the tower, and this was a place where she was awaiting her coronation, but this would then become her prison, her execution site, and final resting place. To begin with, Mary I spared her life, but as Jane was considered a more serious Protestant threat to the Catholic Queen Mary I, then the Queen took action. She would witness her husband's headless body being brought into the Tower of London from Tower Hill, where he lost his head. But then she would be condemned herself. She said when she was brought to the scaffold, Good people, I am come hither to die, and by law I am condemned to the same. The fact indeed against the Queen's Highness was unlawful, and the consenting thereunto by me, but touching the procurement and desire thereof by me, or on my behalf, I do wash my hands thereof of innocency, before God, and the face of you, good Christian people, this day. Jane was just a teenage girl when she lost her head, and she asked the executioner to dispatch her quickly. But Jane then panicked when she blindfolded herself, and she could not find the block, and she panicked before she was helped to it by the deputy lieutenant of the Tower of London. Then her head was taken off in one swift blow. These five women were the only five women who would be executed within the walls of the Tower of London. There were many men who lost their heads inside of the tower, but these were also considered very privileged people. These were women who were two of the wives of the king. One had helped another sleep with the king's favourite courtier. One was a short reigning monarch, and Margaret Pole was an elderly woman who had been butchered on the cobbled floor of the tower. But there were many more women who would be later be buried inside the Tower of London's walls, but only five women would be executed inside. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.